we're at the end of three days of DISCOP and I'm talking to Patrick Zhukovicki who is the uh, initiator of DISCOP Africa. Patrick, you are going to be running an event in October 2012 called TV Loves Africa. What's TV Loves Africa about? Why, why are you doing this? Well, first of all, we're doing this event because we see how the uh, television content uh, industry in Africa is growing and has grown in, uh, since we started uh, this Cup Africa four years ago. We feel that uh, the timing is right for a grander event that would bring together more people involved in content uh, production, distribution, development, programming, funding, merchandising, marketing. It's a whole big family of uh, various uh, professionals. Many of them are already attending this Cup Africa and this Cup Africa will be part of this grander event, TV Loves Africa. This Cup Africa will fuel this event, but will add several other uh, important uh, market and conference programs to enhance the whole, uh, uh, the whole package. The whole package. And it's taking place in the uh, Santon Convention Center. It is. It's and we'll have uh, something like 2,000 people if it all goes well. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the themes, those, those components, which in a sense expand what is going on. So there will be an um, uh, exploratory uh, forum uh, on uh, African sports rights. Uh, this event will bring together uh, African sports uh, leagues, federation, and confederation, and uh, they will explore their possibilities for them to produce content, brand their content, and monetize their sports content. There's going to be an event, a conference called Top News Africa, about the production distribution of news in Africa, an event called Eyeballs, which will be mainly targeted at advertisers interested in enga better engaging audiences across various different platforms. It's going to be an event uh, called um, Africa Pitches the World. It will be a pitching and co-production forum where African uh, content producers, mostly African producers with formats and documentaries, they will be able to pitch their projects to African broadcasters, but also uh, um, overseas uh, broadcasters interested in funding such projects. Um, there's going to be a market called Signature. This market is about licensing and branding of television content properties. And uh, another event uh, called Voice of Africa, which will be uh, a conference uh, on the production distribution of radio. Uh, and this is the first time for radio, isn't it, really? It is absolutely the first time for radio. Yeah. Uh, it's the first time for radio, and, and we feel that radio is very important, mm. despite the fact that radio is not always uh, considered as, as well as television. We see more bridges between the world of radio and the world of television, mostly in terms of content that have been, that have been first adapted for radio and now being adapted for television. And you see many radio stations, particularly in Ghana, Joy FM and Peace FM, both you know going into television. So it's, it's we see them. First of all, most in most cases, many of these radios are owned by companies who also own TV stations. Mm. Now we see we see first of all from the advertisers' point of view, radio is an important component in any kind of uh, uh, strategy. Uh, but we also see ways for uh, companies who produce radio content to adapt their content and have that radio uh, show become a television, televised, mm. TV series, whatever, whatever you And you've been, now been running Discop for it's three years, is it? Uh, Discop Africa, yeah. this is the, the end of the third year. This is our yeah. sixth Discop Africa. Okay. But I've been running Discop, organizing Discop markets for over 20 years now. Yes. But the, in Africa, over the last three years, what, what are the three big changes that you think you've seen in the industry here, because there has been enormous changes. What, what are the three things that you would highlight? From our perspective, what we've seen over the last three years, we've seen a growing number of African content producers attending our market to sell content. And at, at, at the beginning of, of, of this uh, Discop Africa initiative, our, 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 our role was really to also provide African content producers with a platform to sell 
products throughout Africa, and, and this was a problem. So today, one of the biggest surprises that we see a growing number of more and more African cotton producers from Kenya, mm. from Nigeria, from South Africa, from Senegal, Ghana, mm. come to, to, to desktop Africa to sell cotton. The second uh, thing that we have seen is a technological factor. We've seen in the last four years uh, new internet, uh, better quality internet. We've seen digital, uh, the, the digital switchover goes faster than anticipated. Mm -hmm. We've seen many new TV stations and we've seen uh, uh, new operators coming into the market in need of content and in need of quality content. And the third thing that we've seen uh, is that uh, uh, we've seen uh, TV stations uh, look at their uh, programming strategy in a completely different way. Uh, we, we feel that we were able to bring to them a, a much wider spectrum of content suppliers than they uh, had access to uh, three years ago before this Cup mm. Africa existed. And, and this uh, has given them an opportunity to uh, improve their 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 their, pro their grids, mm -hmm. their programming strategy, and and we hear now from our clients, those who sell content mm -hmm. to African uh, pay TV platforms, TV stations, and so forth, they tell us that you know now they know exactly what they want. They have a better mm -hmm. understanding of their audiences, of their needs, of their budgets, and it's much more professional uh, business encounter than than, than than it was three years ago. Finally, just to finish off. Um, you've arranged for the three winners of the Discop Pro pitch session that happened here in Nairobi to go to the Montreux Comedy Festival. Describe to me how that came about and, and what you think they might get out of it. Well, we, uh, we, we, we work um, with the Montreux Comedy Festival and they had asked us uh, to uh, add to their uh, festival, which has been around for 22 years, it's a big comedy festival, to add a business component. So we, we really try to think about how to position that, that, fast, that business component in, in the world of, of, of markets, mm. uh, which is already very busy. Mm. So the little niche that we thought was interesting was how the adaptation of comedy concepts. Interesting in the sense that it is uh, virgin territory, mm. but interesting also because it's a big challenge. How mm. do you adapt? Culturally, it's interesting. Culturally, it's very yeah. it's, it's interesting. How does the French joke become the American joke? That's yeah. exactly the yeah. whole point. Yeah. So we we, 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 uh, we, we we did some research and we felt that this was an interesting niche and this is really something that if we manage to overcome those difficulties, then there's a lot of uh, possibilities. TV stations today are looking for comedy content, mm. of course. So, and then we, we said, okay, uh, uh, let's uh, 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 bring, you know, uh, uh, comedy content from a part of the world uh, that uh, has great and see whether we can you know apply those formulas to uh, and, and see if, the, if, if that content can, can be sold uh, mm. abroad so we decided to uh, put an emphasis on uh, to, to invite Nigeria Nigeria will be the country of honor at this next festival uh, and we've also decided to bring in also African content producers uh, specialize in comedy con uh, concept and see if their concept can be uh, can be sold and adapted in other countries. And we were surprised to, to, to find a lot of comedy content producers from Africa who were keen on the idea of trying mm. on having an opportunity to adapt their, 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 their concept yeah. uh, uh, due to the fact, first of all, that uh, they, they have difficulties finding money from, from, yeah. from the sponsors, from the TV stations over here, and that's a way for them to generate revenue. Yeah. So they can license the concept. Yeah. So, so uh, that this is the reason why. And I have to say, Teja Babyface was a real standout amongst those pitches. Yes. You know, yeah. Very highly well, highly produced, very funny, mm -hmm. very slick. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. We no, no, I'm very happy that they're going to be yeah. coming to Montreux. I think it will be very interesting. And, and, and aside of everything, it's funny. You know, yes. it, it works. Yes. You know, it works. And, and it doesn't, it's, it's, you don't need subtitles. Right? Yeah. If you understand what I mean. Absolutely. Absolutely. Patrick, thanks for talking to me today. Thank you very much.